In this tutorial, I'm going to show basic After Effects usage with stereoscopic 180 degree VR video. And I'm also going to demonstrate how to do a mirroring effect. In other words, putting yourself in a mirror and not seeing the camera. So you have to make two videos, one outside the mirror and one in the mirror. I have to make that work. So I'm going to open up After Effects and I'm going to create um, a new project. It opens a window and now I'm going to import the video that I've shot with my camera, one of the outside of the mirror and one of what I want to be reflected in the mirror, which I use the EVO camera for, Insta360 EVO camera, and stitch the files together already in the Insta360 Studio 2020 um, software that they give you. So I'm going to import those two files. Here I have the mirror and in mirror spelled wrong. And I'm going to take the mirror and I will drop it down into the timeline area and that will immediately make a composition here that is of the same length and uh, size as whatever I drop in. So first thing I need to do is cut holes where these mirrors are so that whatever I put below it in the layers will show through so I can put the reflection that I want to show through. So I need to make this bigger so I can see what I'm doing. So right now I'm looking at it at 25% size magnification and I can make that larger. I could say go to 50%, um, go to 100%. If I, I can even, if I have a three button mouse, I can scroll the, the wheel and that'll also make it get smaller or larger. And I, I need to move it over. And if I hold the space bar, it becomes temporarily a little hand and then I can move the video over without really moving the video. I'm just changing my view of it. And I'm going to go a little bit bigger. I'm at 200%. And that's actually pretty good because I can see all the edges that I want to mask off. Okay, so if I want to mask it, I'm going to grab my pen tool right here. Here's the pen tool. And it's a true pen tool, so it's got handles and things. So I'm going to click a dot right here to create the mask. Another dot here, that's a straight line. So it make, it's gonna make the straight line. And this is a bit of a curve down here. So I'm gonna click here and drag to get these little handles to come out. So I can start that curve and I'll fix it on this side later. And I'm gonna click and drag, click, uh, to put that point in a better spot later. And then click and then click. Good enough for now. Um, okay, so it's the wrong, a little bit the wrong shape. I have to adjust it. And it's also inverted. I want this to be the hole in the middle. So I'm going to open up this track of the, the mirror here, the layer. And here's the masks. And here's mask one that I just made. And it has a little inverted checkbox area that I can do. So I can invert it. Great. I can see it. Now holding my option key, still with my... Um, pen tool, holding my option key will make it so that I can pull out these handles. So I want to pull out this handle here to make this curve like this. That's pretty good. Maybe I'll move this up a little bit. Drag this handle all the way to the point because that's going to be a sharp corner. Use my spacebar to move down the video. Just gotta fix these over here. Um, this point right here, again, holding my option key, I'm gonna drag that inward because that has to be a straight corner. And also this point is at the wrong spot, so I'll drag it down just by clicking on it and dragging it. And then I will fix this one. And then it looks like I need to fix this one. So I click and drag to get that curve that I like. And then this other one over here, I'm going to drag right to it. There we go. Uh, pretty good. I can feather the mask and all that if I want. It's got numbers here if you want to feather things, but I'm going to leave it alone. So now I just need to um, put the same mask on the other side, on the right side. Okay, so I'm going to draw the second mask. So I'm going to use my hand to move this over. Holding the space bar makes the hand. 
Now I'm going to draw the second mask. Grab the pen tool again. Click, 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 drag, click, click, click. And then holding option. Fix these curves. Holding option, drag these hands out. Fix that curve. All right, good enough. Okay, and I'm going to roll. The mouse and you'll see that one of them's working and the other one's not even though they're um i, I can invert both of them now uh, but now neither one of them are working and the reason why is you have to change this add now to intersect in order to get both of them to work and then they both will work and if you had 10 masks they'd all work too if everything was set to intersect great that one's done ready to go with the with the mirror of the room now i need to get my reflection in there so here's me in the mirror I'm going to drag that below it so it pokes through from the holes. You can see now that it's poking through, although it's completely wrong. So I'm going to move the playhead to the right spot. There I am in the mirror. Figure out where I want to start. So let's say from right there. So now I'm going to take this clip right here, right where the playhead is, and just drag it down over to the beginning so that I'll move the playhead to the beginning now so that on that point is the beginning okay um, first thing I need to do is this image is too big and I have to mirror it it has to be everything that's on the right has, has to be on the left so I'm going to open it up go to transform and I'm going to scale it 50%. And the reason why is I need it, I put the camera right where the sink is and it has to be double that distance away because when you look in the mirror, you have to count for the depth of the mirror itself looking in the mirror. So it'd be double that distance. So I have to make it half size, 50%. So it automatically makes both 50%, but now it's not centered. And the reason why I'll turn off a little eyeball right here in this top layer, you can see what it did. I need to make these separate the left has to be at 50 percent in the middle the right has to be at 50 percent in the middle so i have to do it twice and then move them over a little turn that eyeball back on there so i'll just do it for one with one of them first and then i'll copy and paste that and scooch it over so for position um, i will just start moving this over on the left clicking and dragging the number and so I want it you know about there um, but what it turns out if I want it centered exactly what I need to do is take this 21 8, 2880 number and subtract a fourth of it because I'm at half size I have to go to a fourth of it so 2880 minus 720 720 is the fourth of 2880 um, is going to be 2160 2160, and there it is. That's perfectly centered at half size. Now I just have to mirror it. So that's going to be a scale thing. Now, if I just make one of these numbers here on the scale, one's vertical, one's horizontal, if I make it a minus, um, it'll change the other one too. And I don't want to do that because that'll just flip the whole thing upside down. So I need to um, turn off the little a vertical horizontal lock right there a little locking thing and make this one a minus a minus 50 instead of 50 and there it is perfect it just changed the horizontal minus 50 and then 50 is this, the general size so that's one of them now i just need to duplicate that and put it on the other side at the right spot so i'm going to select it and hit Command 
D for duplicate. And then I've got two of them, but they're right on top of each other. So I'll take the bottom one. It doesn't really matter which one I take. One of them's going to be the left, one's going to be the right. I'll just take the bottom one here and position it. Instead of 2160 where it is, I'll just start clicking and dragging that over to the right and get it about in the right spot. Somewhere around there. And as it turns out, what I need to do is add a, qu a quarter of the 2880 to this one. The top one I did subtract, this one I have to add. So 2880 plus 720 is going to be 2900 plus 7 is 3600. And perfect, there I am. All right, that's ready to go. And if you want to play it, you hit your space bar right here. And what it'll do, it'll start rendering it. It starts turning green. So it starts making new video that has all of your commands in it. In other words, everything you've done. And it slowly moves it along. You barely can see it moving here, just like maybe one frame per second. Depending upon the speed of your computer, how much RAM you've got, it can go a little faster, a little slower. Once it does turn green, it means that part is rendered. So the next time I do it, I can move the playhead back. It'll just go at normal speed because it has some video to look at. But it only goes up to that spot. So it works a little bit differently than Premiere. Now, if, if I want to control how big my video is, in other words, how long it is, before I uh, render it out, um, I can use this work area end right here, which is on the right. It's this first blue box on the right and drag that to, let's say I'll make it three seconds long, four seconds long, maybe. The one above it controls how big or how small the timeline is. If you drag the right side and you can see the little um, big, small thing changing with it. It's the same thing. Um, or you can also drag this side and it'll, it'll zoom in on um, the area that is at the end. So that's how you navigate that. If I want to cut these off anywhere, you don't just take a razor blade tool like in Premiere and cut these. What you end up doing is you put the playhead there where you want to cut it. It'll snap. And you hit Command Shift D instead of Command D for duplicate. You hit Command Shift D and it duplicates it, but it chops it at that point. And then you could delete the one you don't want, in this case, the top one. And now it cuts it off right there. And I can do it to the rest of them. Command Shift D and then delete the top one. So it definitely works different than Premiere. Command Shift D, delete the top one. And so now these are cut off, it just goes to black. Has to render that. Uh, render, there it is. So I had rendered one frame there. Um, anyway, that's how you stop them. Now, of course, when I export this now, it's only going to go to the end of this work area anyway. So four seconds. So in order to now to render it, file, export, you have to add it to the Adobe Media Encoder in order to get VR to work. So you can't just add it to a render queue and go for it. You have to go for the Media Encoder. So you do that. And it's going to start up the Media Encoder um, and put it in there. And it's going to take a lot longer than you just saw. It'll probably take a good, could be 30 seconds. All right, so let's see. Let's change this. This is at H265, which is right. And so if yours came out H265, that's great. HEVC, if not, change it to that. Uh, give it a name, or however you want to do it. Uh, you can export audio and video, great. Uh, let's may as well render at maximum depth, why not? Keep going down. These bit rates are a little low for me. I usually go around 50 approximately. It should be good. Video is VR. It is stereoscopic side by side. Um, I usually leave these numbers. I mean, really, it's 180 by 180, but it doesn't seem to make any difference. 
And then I'm going to click Use Maximum Render Quality and hit OK. And now I'm back in Adobe Media Encoder. So I set everything, but now I have to tell it to go ahead and render it. Um, so to do that, you simply start the queue by pressing on the little green playhead, and then it will start to render it. Um, and then when it's finished, and it takes a little while, um, if you need to upload it to YouTube, you'll probably have to put it into a metadata injector um, to make sure it works. And that's about it.